Okay, friends, good morning. morning. How's everybody doing today? Good. There wasn't any freezing rain when we woke up. I guess that's a good sign. Let's hope the rest of the day um, turns out just as well. My name is Jake McLaughlin, and I'm the pastor of Restoration Church. We're so glad that you all are here. I am joined today by Chris. and by Eddie and Jackie. And uh, we're just so glad you all are here. If this is your first time here at Restoration, I want to especially welcome you. Uh, Now, for all of you, if you all would let us know you're here by texting RL here to 29456, that would be really helpful for us. Um, It'll also allow us to stay connected to you via email, social media, and the like. And then um, also, if you are interested in following along in the service, the scripture, the lyrics um, of the songs and the like, it will be behind me on the screen. But you can also go to restorationloudon.org slash Sunday. And as you came in, you should have received uh, a little bit of a gift. And uh, that gift includes a sticker, which you should place somewhere very prominently in your life, on your car, on your phone, uh, or wherever you'd like to put stickers. And then you should have received uh, two cards um, that I'll talk about a little bit later in the service, along with a pen. So I hope that you all will hold on to those. And again, we're just so glad that you all are here today, that we get to worship the Lord together. And uh, I'm going to ask Chris to come up. And as we prepare our hearts and minds for worshiping God together, let's stand um, as you are able. And uh, let's share in the call to worship that Chris will lead for us. We come together in the presence of God to pause. We pause to pay attention to our lives, to listen to the wisdom within be present to the lives of our neighbors and companions. We come together in the presence of God to hope. With hope, we seek to enflesh the promises of God, letting peace make its home in us, creating paths of restoration for all that is being destroyed, practicing love that uplifts and empowers. Here we are, O God. May your spirit move in this place. Let us pray. Compassionate one, when we grow weary with the challenges of our time, may your spirit revive us through the ancient stories of our faith. In turning to things past, may we find new grounding in the present. Through great suffering, you have sustained your people. Into lands of milk and honey, your hand has guided. By your loving embrace, lives have been transformed. Let us not forget the history of your great works in our present labor for a world renewed. Amen. If you guys can please remain standing while we uh, sing our first song together. Great is thy faithfulness, O God, my Father. There is no shadow
great is thy faithfulness, great is thy faithfulness, morning by morning, new mercies I see, all I have needed thy hand hath Great is thy faithfulness, Lord, unto me. Pardon for sin and a peace that endureth. be seated. So friends, we're going to have a a time of corporate prayer. This will be an opportunity for us um, to offer up to God the things that are on our hearts and the things that are on our minds. Um, I ask, um, we did this last week, I'm I'm going to encourage you to do it again uh, today, is that as you're sitting down, if you just take your hands and you just uh, put them on your legs as such and just open your hands up. And this is like a It's like a posture of openness. So just even with our hands, that physical act of just opening up our hands and just um, pointing them towards um, the heavens above, um, we are offering up ourselves just a little bit more. So we're going to start with a time of silence. This is an opportunity for you to share the things that are on your heart, the things that are on your mind, the the good and the hard things. Um, then I will um, offer up a corporate prayer for us, a congregational prayer. And then we'll pray together the Lord's Prayer. And if that's, not, if that's something that's not um, familiar to you, um, it will be on the screen behind me. And uh, just as a personal side note to the Lord's Prayer, um, me and my kids and Robin have been praying the Lord's Prayer at night. And uh, you know, my son, uh, you know, a couple nights ago, said, Dad... You know, if you could just say the Lord's Prayer a little bit slower, I think I can keep up with you when we're at church. So um, we already say it um, at a nice cadence, but friends, can we just say it a little bit slower than normal? Would that be okay so our little ones can join us? Um, I think that would be, well, I'm, I'm making my son happy, which, you know, when we have those opportunities, right? Parents, when we have that opportunity, we want to do that. So um, that doesn't include candy and pizza and ice cream, right? Amen. So, uh, so friends, let's uh, let's let's have a let's have a moment of silence and offer to God what's on our hearts. Let's pray. Almighty and gracious creator. Each of us comes to you today, here in this space, here at Mercer Middle School, 
with hands pointed towards the heavens, open and willing to um, experience your loving presence. And so, Lord, as the church, I pray here and now that your Holy Spirit might descend upon us, that we may have an experience of your love and grace that surpasses any, any wisdom or understanding that we think we have. No doubt each of us comes, Lord, with um, a stirring on our hearts. Maybe it's a task that we really want to get done this week. Um, maybe it's a lament about how much our kids have been home this past week, though if you spent any time sledding, it was pretty awesome. Maybe there's a challenge in the household or at work. Maybe there is something new on the horizon that you couldn't be more excited about, that we couldn't be more excited about. Lord, I just pray that whatever that stirring is, that we would just know that you're with us in it. The good stuff and the hard stuff, the, the wonderful, joyous things and the things that raise our anxiety. I mean, Lord, right now in this new year, there is no doubt that there is raised anxiety for people. There are challenging things ahead of us. But Lord, that's one of the reasons why we made the decision to talk about hope. Hope that isn't rooted in the things that we do. Hope that isn't rooted in our circumstances. Hope that is not rooted in some magic formula that uh, we can read on a blog or on social media. But hope that is firmly rooted in who you are. Hope that connects us to you and to our neighbors. And so, Lord, I pray today that in some way, shape, or form, we might commit ourselves to um, a way of life, to a way of being, to a way of interacting with people, uh, to a way of showing love to our neighbors that doesn't point to the goodness of our character, but points to the greatness of your love. That's my prayer. That hope and light would shine in our lives. And that it would be a hope and light that comes from you that we just get to be a part of. Lord, I'm so thankful for the ways that we can be in community together. I'm so, so thankful for the ways that we get to be called your church. I'm amazed at the ways that you call us sons and daughters, your beloved children. Thank you, Lord. From the deepest places of our hearts, thank you, Lord. And we offer this up, Lord, um, with the prayer that your son taught us, praying together in a gentle way, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Thank you, friends. Um, now, uh, what we're going to do is we're going to invite our kiddos to uh, go hang out with Miss Jennifer and Miss Yanina and go do some off awesome crafts and coloring and all those different things. And friends, why don't we just stand up for a few minutes and just greet one another and see how people are doing and all that fun stuff. So friends, I uh, just want to share a couple things happening in the life of the church that, uh, that you should be aware of. The first is, um, this is week two of a sermon series that we're calling uh, Start With Hope, because what better way to start 2022 um, than with hope? And uh, so uh, this week, we're going to be talking about what hope is and what it isn't. 
and where it comes from. Um, and next week, we're going to talk about um, hope and cynicism. And then the week after that, I don't remember, but it has something to do with hope. So uh, I haven't written that one yet. So we'll, we'll, But I promise you it'll be about hope. Let's just say that. Um, so the next thing I want to let you know about is uh, January 30th. On January 30th, we're going to do a worship service that I'm currently calling Dreaming of Holy Mischief in 2022. And, you know, one of the things that I wanted to do today was actually invite you all to a meeting after church on the 30th to talk about the ways that God may be moving us together in 2022. But then I was like, you know, when I say meeting, often people go, I don't think I'm going to stay. And uh, because who likes meetings on Sunday? I mean, if we're being really honest, uh, people like, you know, watching football or going grocery shopping and all those different things. Um, but what we're going to do is we're going to do something a little bit differently. Uh, we're, gonna, we're going to do a service, a worship service, that is going to be interactive. And it's going to bring up some of these things that I've been praying about, some of the things that our core team is going to be talking about, um, just ways for us to be in ministry together over the coming year. And one of the ways that we're going to really ask you all to participate over the next few weeks is by these cards. So today you should have received two different cards. Um, the first one is, uh, will be a part of the service. It'll be a part of the sermon, okay? It's about hope. But the second one is, whenever we're doing communion today, there's going to be, um, we're going to ask you to write a prayer for communion. And there's going to be a basket in the back where you can drop these off whenever you're leaving. I'm the one who's going to receive these, okay? So uh, I'm going to pray for whatever's on these cards, okay? I'm going to take time today and uh, probably during the week to look at these and pray for each and every one of these. So if you write a prayer, it is going to be prayed for, okay? I want you to hear that loud and clear. Um, but the other thing on the back, if you look at it, it says, my prayer for Restoration Church. Each week, I'm going to ask you all to, um, to offer up to the church the, the longings that you have, the, the desires that you have for us as a community. So for example, this week is that I'm just asking you to write a prayer for Restoration Church. I pray that we may do X, Y, or Z. And it could be something like, I want us to do something, or maybe it's an aspiration. I want us to live up to, um, when we say we welcome all people, I want us to be really serious about what that means, right? It could be something aspirational. It could be something in your life, whatever it is. Each week, I'm going to ask you to provide, um, I'm going to provide you with a prompt so that you can offer up things that are on your heart so that as we're considering 2022, we're doing it with um, discernment in mind but we're also doing it with um, the community in mind. So, you know, Sean and Erica, you might have an idea of something that you'd really love us to see us do. Same for, for Laura or, or Nancy. You might have this thing you've been wanting to do as a church. This is your chance. And if you don't write your name on it, then I won't know who it came from. I'll just say it was from the Holy Spirit. So you get to be the Holy Spirit over the next couple of weeks. How does that sound? Um, I think that sounds pretty awesome. So, uh, so that's what we're going to be doing on the 30th. I would encourage you, if there's folks you haven't seen in church in a while, um, friends that, you know, that have come with you or you just haven't seen in a while, I would encourage you to invite them to come on the 30th. And then finally, as, um, as we do all weeks, I want to say thank you so much for your giving. Um, the ways that you give allows us to do ministry and mission here in Dulles South. It allows us to, you know, rent Mercer Middle School. It allows us to do fun and awesome things for kids. It allows us to do service projects. You know, all those different things we are able to do because of your generosity. Um, and if uh, you want to learn more, you can go to restorationloudon.org slash give. And I think Eddie and Jackie are going to offer us a song. Good morning, friends. My name is Eddie and this is Jackie. We are excited to be here to share with you and to offer this to you this morning as our offering. In Christ alone, my hope is found. He is my light, my strength, my song. This cornerstone, this solid ground, firm through the fiercest drought and storm. 
What heights of love, what depths of peace When fears are stilled, when striving cease My comforter, my all in all Here in the love of Christ I stand In Christ alone, who took on flesh, fullness of God in helpless pain, this gift of love and righteousness, scorned by the ones He came to save, till on that cross as Jesus died. Scripture reading today comes from Hebrews chapter 6, verses 13, 13 through 20. Uh, as you listen to this passage, take some time to consider the words or phrases that resonate with you and what God may be revealing to you with this passage. When God made his promise to Abraham, since there was no one greater for him to swear by, he swore by himself, saying, I will surely bless you and give you many descendants. After and so, after waiting patiently, Abraham received what was promised. People swear by someone greater than themselves, and the oath confirms what is said and puts an end to all argument. Because God wanted to make the unchanging nature of his purpose very clear to the heirs of what was promised, he confirmed it with an oath. God did this so that by two unchangeable things in which it is impossible for God to lie, we who have fled to take hold of the hope set before us may be greatly encouraged. We have this hope as an anchor for the soul, firm and secure. It enters the inner sanctuary behind the curtain where our forerunner, Jesus, has entered on our behalf. He has become a high priest forever in the order of Melchizedek. Thank you. So as I said earlier, we're talking about hope. And hope is a hard concept to preach about it, to preach about. I'll admit it. It's, it can be really challenging. It's not hard to talk about what hope is and what hope isn't, but, but rather I find it's quite difficult to share with people how to have hope. It's hard because hope is something that is cultivated over time in our hearts, body, and mind. It's a matter of posture rather than a box we can conveniently check. It's more, it's more of a quality that we can possess than a skill that we can collect. And despite this, we'll continue talking about hope. We have to talk about hope, and we have to talk about hope because hope is as integral um, to our lives, as critical to the function and fullness of our lives as bread and as water. 
and hope. Hope is something that can live abundantly inside of us if we were to just give it the attention it deserves. Last week, I described hope in the way that human rights lawyer Brian Stevenson um, suggested that hope, hope is a superpower, something that will sustain us in hard and in challenging times. Hope isn't something you can earn by doing more stuff, nor can we conjure up hope from the finite sources of willpower that we have within us. Hope is rather a gift from God that we get to get glimpses of. Glimpses in our faith, glimpses in our relationships and in our families, glimpses um, in our vocation. We get glimpses of of this hope in our lives. And in the Hebrew Bible, hope is defined as confident expectation. And in the New Testament Greek, hope is defined simply as expectation or anticipation. But using these as our guides, um, you know, I have a simple definition of biblical hope. And it looks something like this, that hope is the confident expectation in the promises of God. And our scripture lesson today that comes from the book of Hebrews bears out this definition in a number of subtle but really important ways. And the the writer of Hebrews, who many believe was Paul, um, who wrote the letters to the Romans, the Corinthians, Colossians, etc., etc., he alludes to the story of Abraham, which is found in the book of Genesis. Abraham, if you don't know, is the father of our faith. In fact, Christianity is one of three Abrahamic faiths that includes Judaism, Christianity, and Islam. All of these faith traditions can trace trace their lineage back to Abraham. Abraham would hear God speak in the story of Genesis, and ultimately he would follow God despite the hardships and uncertainty that he faced, and frankly, um, the, the mistakes that Abraham would make on this journey. And in turn, God offered Abraham significant blessing not only to him, but to his descendants. And this is what he says in Genesis 12, verses 2 to 3, that uh, Paul was alluding to. He says, I will make you into a great nation, and I will bless you. I will make your name great, and you will be a blessing. I will bless those who bless you, and whoever curses you, I will curse, and all the peoples on earth will be blessed through you. Then the writer of Hebrews, Paul, then describes the nature of God's power power and character by saying this, that it is impossible for God to lie. And part of what he is describing in this is saying that God embodies truth, that God will do what God says God will do. And this gives us a sense that any expectation, any anticipation rooted in who God is, can be trusted. We can have a confident expectation in the promises of God. But then the writer of Hebrews points to us, to you and me, to the Hebrews that he was writing to by saying, we have this hope as an anchor for the soul, firm and secure. And so if we just look at those three very short parts of this passage, we see that the writer of Hebrews is telling us that the consistent nature of blessing and the narrative of blessing from the beginning of history is an inheritance to the people of God. That from the beginning until now, we are heirs of a God that blesses, a God that keeps promises, and as followers of Jesus, We are heirs of a God that became one of us. And so hope then arises when God is our anchor, firm and secure, as Paul says. So hope is the confident expectation, the promises of God rooted in who God is, not what's happening in and around our lives. Hope guards and uplifts us in the challenges that we face. You know, over the course of this week, I've been 
reminding myself over and over about the power of words. Hope. Hope is a really powerful word. And I can only speak for myself when I say that um, I feel like I've been using the word hope in the shallowest of ways for most of my life. All the time. You know, many of us use the word hope as a stand-in for luck or for wishful thinking. For example, I hope I win the Powerball. And of course, I'll give it all to charity. Um, I hope that you like this sermon and don't leave here going, gosh, Jake is so terrible. Um, I hope that there's no freezing rain today. I hope that my package from Amazon comes on time. When hope is used so flippantly, does it lose some of its meaning? Does it lose some of its meaning? That's just what I've been thinking about this past week. Does hope still feel like the confident expectation of the promises of God when I talk about whether or not my L.L. Bean package gets here on time? It's just a word, right? The words have power. Hope is a sacred word, a word with power. And friends, I'm going to invite you all to do what I'm going to be doing. I'm going to try my best to use the word hope when I mean the word hope, when I mean biblical hope, when I mean the confident expectation in the promises of God. So here's what I'd like you all to do. Um, You should have received this blue card, and it says on top, hope is... Um, Isn't it awesome that we're in a school that has the little desk things that pop up? So why don't we, on three, let's all just move that thing so we can write stuff down on three. One, two, three. Just like that. Yes, you're doing homework. Hope is. Hope is, I want you to write this down, the confident expectation in the promises of God. Hope is the confident expectation in the promises of God. You know, in thinking about this narrative, about the the, the weaving of the biblical narrative into our lives... You know, I'm really reminded about history. And the history we can look back on and see that it was filled with countless people, communities, generations that fought for and lived with hope because they saw hope as a promise of God. And so for the second thing where it says hope is rooted in, I want you to write this. Hope is rooted in who God is, not my circumstances. Hope is rooted in who God is, not my circumstances. And listen, that doesn't mean we remain unaffected by the things that happen in our lives. We can experience joy. We can experience grief. We can have hard things. We can have great things. But hope undergirds all of that. It's rooted in who God is and God's love for you. not in what happens when you walk outside of these doors. Now, when you're done, I want you to turn your card over, and I want you to see what we have here. First, you should see two things. You should see Hebrews 6.19, which says, we have this hope as an anchor for the soul, firm and secure, and an anchor. And I want to give you just a brief history lesson really quick. In early Christianity, the primary symbol of Christianity wasn't the cross, It was the anchor. This was especially true for those who suffered persecution. As Christianity today shares, anchors would often be placed on tombs with messages of hope such as, peace be with you. Ancient Christians in the midst of persecution and community would remember this verse in particular. 
And as we recall our place in the story of God, we must remember that we are not the first people to experience times of uncertainty, times of joy, times of hardship. And I don't need to do a rundown of the weekly news for you all to understand and grasp, grasp this. But here's, here's what I'd like you all to do today. I want you to take a moment. And I want you to look at this anchor. And I want you to look at the scripture. And I want you to list the people, things, or activities in your life that point to who you understand God to be. Write the things down that point to God as an anchor in your life. For me, I would write Jesus. I would write my family, um, art, poetry. I love reading poetry. That connects me to God. Um, I love walking in nature. This community. Whatever those activities are, whatever those people, whoever those people are cooking for people, whatever it is, you can write a friend's name, a prayer that means a lot to you. Maybe you love a particular scripture passage or baking. Whatever those things are, let's take a moment and write those down. It could be the name of a parent something you really enjoy doing that points to something greater than you. And you may be asking, um, why am I asking you to do this? Well, it's really simple. It's just to give you a very simple tool that will allow you to focus on the stuff that really matters in your life. Because I bet that's the stuff that you're writing down right now. You're writing down the stuff that really matters. And friends, there are a lot of people, companies, and powers that are vying for your focus and your attention. Focus and attention, in my view, are two of the most important types of currency in the world right now. I'm reading this book right now called uh, Deep Work. It's written by um, a guy named Cal Newport. And one of the things that he says is that research shows, and I quote, our brain constructs our worldview based on what we pay attention to. That's science, y'all. So what if you focus on the things that root you in God, that makes your heart feel bigger? Hope. Hope. Hope is our anchor, firm and secure. You know, each of us has hardships and challenges, hard things to do, wonderful things to do, but my longing for each and every one of us is that we focus our attention on the matters that connect us to God's redeeming love, the things that connect us to other people, and the, and the grace of community, the power of faith. When God is our anchor, firm and secure, and we focus our attention on the people, places, and activities that point to God as our anchor, we will have hope in all manner of things. And so maybe you should put this little card somewhere prominent in your life. Your refrigerator. Maybe um, in your car. In your wallet or bag. And when your anxiety starts going up because of a new work deadline or uh, some other issue that's going on, you can just pull that card out. Maybe you can take a picture of it. And you can remind yourself that you are firmly rooted in God's love. Firm and secure. Thanks be to God, friends. Amen. So as a community of faith, each time we gather together, we will celebrate the Lord's Supper. The Lord's Supper or communion is an opportunity for us to publicly declare our longing for God's work and God's presence in our lives here and now. In Restoration Church, we practice an open table, which means it is not our table. It is not the United Methodist Church's table. It is God's table. And all who desire to meet God at the table are absolutely and without question welcome. 
in a world that tries to suss people out and exclude, this is the most inclusive place on planet Earth where everyone is welcome. So in addition to the card that you wrote on during the message, you should have received a card that on one side says my communion prayer. And on the other, it says my longing, my prayer for Restoration Church. So before we uh, pray together, I want us to take time to write the things that are on our hearts. So first, write down a prayer request a joy or a concern, something that um, you want me to pray for because I'm going to receive these cards as you leave them in the basket whenever you're exiting. And when that's done, turn the paper around and ask yourself, what is it that you long for in our community of faith, in Restoration Church here in Dulles South? Are there expectations you have Um, about how we can impact people's lives? Is there something that you really, really would love to see us do as a church, like a special service project, a gathering of people? Use the prompt, loving God, I pray that we may do, be something. And so, um, friends, go ahead and write. And as people are finishing, and as I get a sense that people are finishing, Um, We'll share in a corporate prayer together, and then I'll bless the elements. So, um, like I said, there will be a basket in the back for you to drop off this card. Please keep the hope one, the blue one, keep that one and bring that one home. Um, But please leave this green one um, before you go. So let's take time, time now to write. So friends, there will be a prayer um, behind me. Um, let's, um, let's pray this together. Let's pray. We remember today that God formed us. We remember that Christ redeemed us. We remember the Holy Spirit works in and through us. With this sacred and holy knowledge, we offer our thanks. We confess our sin. And we center ourselves on the grace and mercy of God. Amen. On the night in which Christ would give himself up for us, he had a meal with his friends. And he took bread. And he gave thanks to God. And he broke the bread. And he gave it to his disciples and he said, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. As often as you eat of this, remember me. And when the supper was over, he took the cup. And again, he gave thanks to God. And he gave it to his disciples and said, Drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. As often as you drink of this, remember me. Let's pray. Almighty God, pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here and on these gifts of bread and cup. Make them be for us the body and blood of Christ, that we may be for the world the body of Christ, redeemed by his blood. By your Spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit and your Holy Church, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. So friends, if you'll take the bread. It's the body of Christ. And 
And this is the blood of Christ. Thanks be to God. Amen. So friends, now let's uh, stand as you are able, and we're going to sing our final song. Um, this is a newish song. I think we've done it before, and I uh, hope you all enjoy singing it with us. This is the day that you have made. Whatever comes, I won't complain, for all my hope is in your name, and now your joy awaits my praise. I give thanks for all you have done, and I will sing of your mercy and your love, your love is unfailing, Lord, I am grateful. When I was down, you brought me out, you set my feet on higher ground, so here I stand. You are my God, His faithfulness, my solid rock. I give thanks for all you have done, and I will sing of your mercy and your love. Your love is unfailing, Lord, I am grateful. I give this for all you have done. I won't forget all the battles you have won. Your love is unfailing. Lord, I am grateful. And as we lift our hands up, heaven is open, heaven is open. So let our lives declare the love our God has spoken over us. And as we lift our hands up, Heaven's open, heaven's open, so let our lives declare the love our God has spoken over us. I give thanks for all you have done, and I will sing of your mercy and your love, your love is unfailing, Lord, I am grateful. So friends, if we pay attention to the narrative of Scripture, we see that God has been blessing countless people, countless communities. We learn that God's promises are kept and that we get to be a part of the story of God's, of God's work here and now. We are the continuation of a story that has lasted since the beginning. And that roots us in a hope that is beyond us. 
absolutely and totally beyond us. And so, friends, I hope that you know what your anchors are this week. The things that root you firmly and securely in the love of God. And so no matter where you go, work, school, the grocery store, and the like, you'll have hope going with you. And friends, that's some really good news. Because if the world needs anything right now, it's a whole lot of hope. So I bid you all peace. I bid you all grace. And I hope you go in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. I give thanks for all you have done. And I will sing of your mercy and your love. Your love is unfailing. Lord, I am Your love is unfair.